Okay, hi everyone. I'm Kai from Alibaba Cloud, and I'm so excited today to be here with you. Uh, and alongside me is Wen Chi Yang from San Yansen University, and we are here to uh, delve into an exciting topic: uh, open telemetry amplified observability with e with eBPF enabled distributed tracing. Okay, um, let's start the first part. Uh, as as cloud native technology has evolved, our applications have undergone revolutionary changes. Uh, we have shifted from monolithic applications to uh, microservices, and uh, from physical machines to containers. This innovation in infrastructure has raised the bar for observability. So, what does observability in Kubernetes really mean? We need to think about this question from different angles. If you are an application developer, you may want to know how your application is performing and whether it's experiencing any overloads. And you will also be interested in understanding which middlewares or services your application depends on and how these services interact with each other. As for network operations professionals, it's crucial to determine if network communication is being blocked when performance issues arise, or if there have any problems with the container network. And if you are a um, network security expert, you will want to know uh, which, uh, which resources your services are trying to access and uh, um, which IP address your services are requesting. Well, OpenTelemetry aims to um, address these questions by providing a comprehensive framework. And uh, it offers a set of tools for generating and uh, collecting and uh, um, processing telemetry data, including um, metrics, traces, and logs. However, um, open telemetry does come with its own challenges. One of the main issues is uh, um, instrumentation. If you have ever used open telemetry, you might, you might have been overwhelmed by the terms like um, trace provider, a meter provider, and span contacts, and the instrumenter. It's not easy to understand this. And if your programming language doesn't support zero instrumentation, then you might have to um, change your codes and integrate these components into your applications. And these components will run alongside your applications, and uh, it will impact the performance. Another challenge is that optometry's capabilities for um, observing the kernel are relatively weak. It focuses more on the um, application level, which means it might not be able to, um, to explain the anomalies in the kernel. Uh, to tackle these observability challenges in Kubernetes, we have explored a new technology, eBPF. And now, Wen Qi Yang will continue to um, share more insights on this topic. Okay. Thank you, Kai, for highlighting the challenges in the existing observability of open telemetry in Kubernetes. And I'm Wen Qi, and I'll share our eBPF-based solution to address the first challenge, the high instrumentation of open telemetry. Before diving into our solution, let me briefly introduce eBPF. eBPF allows user to run sandboxes programs within the Linux kernel without changing the kernel source code. eBPF programs are loaded into the kernel and attached to specific hooks, such as network events or file system operations, with different types like kpros and uprobs targeting kernel and user functions respectively. When the hook operations are invoked, the attached eBPF programs execute. 
Written in C code and combined into bytecode, eBPF programs are verified by the eBPF verifier to ensure safety, preventing issues like attribute memory access or infinite loops. eBPF maps are key value data structures that can store and share data between the eBPF program and user space, enabling persistent data storage. With eBPF, we can offload the request tracing to the kernel, decoupling it from the user applications. This approach eliminates the need for modifying or instrumenting the user program, thereby reducing the instrumentation of, re of request tracing in the user space. While both eBPF and the Linux kernel module LKM extend the kernel functionality, they differ in design and usage. eBPF allows for safe, low-level execution of custom code within the kernel without modifying the kernel source, thanks to the eBPF verifier. In contrast, LKM offer greater flexibility but come with higher overhead and higher risk, such as potential system crashes. Therefore, uh, because of the security guarantee and the lightweight of eBPF, we choose it to implement our internal end-to-end -end request tracing. Uh, before introducing our solution, uh, we first introduced the current approach of open telemetry using eBPF to achieve the automatic res uh, request tracing. At present, open telemetry community presents an eBPF-based automatic distributed tracing framework for the Golan applications. Uh, here is the link to the corresponding GitHub web poll. Uh, although this project implements automatic uh, distributed tracing, it is only for Golang applications and supports only a limited number of key value pairs in the HTTP header when passing the messages. Resulting in no support on passing uh, and tracing the messages with more key value pairs. Therefore, uh, we want to provide an automated request tracing system that can support multiple high-level languages framework and is not limited by the number of the key value pairs uh, in the HTTP header. This figure illustrates the workflow of our eBPF-based distributed tracing framework. Uh, with the black line showing the message transmission and the red lines indicating the data flow of our collective spans. The system operates through uh, two main modules, trace generation and trace collection. The trace generation model includes three submodels, generating trace contacts, inter-service contacts propagation to transmit trace contacts across the network and intra-service contacts propagation to maintain the request causality. The data collection model gathers our collected traces and spans it for further visualization. Next, we mainly expand the three submodels in the trace generation. Uh, we generate the trace contacts use the open telemetry standard. A trace contest consists of a trace ID, span ID, and parent span ID, which uniquely identify a span. The trace ID is a 18-byte volume that includes the host IP address, uh, the entry time step, a sequencing number, a debugging tag, and the process ID. The span ID is an 8-byte volume that includes source and destination IP addresses and a sequencing number. After generating a unique trace context for each operation in an entry -end request, our system propagates this trace context between services. By analyzing the HTTP request format, we use HTTP headers to carry the trace contacts, following the open telemetry approach, allowing the trace contacts to travel across the network. 
as shown in the figure, uh, when a request with our trace contest is, with, is received, uh, our eBPF program hooked to the uh, capo on SOC receive, mes uh, receive message kernel function intercepts and extracts the trace contest without removing it. Uh, when sending requests to the upstream service, our SKMSG eBPF program ingests the trace contest as custom key value pairs into the request header, uh, which may increase the message length. The key to trace an end-to-end -end request is to accurately recognize the request causality. To achieve this, our system must effectively propagate the trace contest through the service, from the parent request to the children request. Uh, since the scheduling of an application on a user program is consistent, we focus on uh, capturing the user thread creation in the kernel to understand the thread execution and their parent-child relationships. Uh, in the, uh, as our observed, the application handle requests in many two ways. Single-threaded applications serve requests in a single thread, sending uh, the request to the upstream service and waiting for the upstream responses within the same thread. Multi-threaded applications serve or uh, requests use multiple collaborating threads. Uh, typically, in a simple scenario, the application creates new threads and schedules idle ones to request the upstream service. Multi-threaded applications are often implemented using thread pools or coroutines. The application creates a task or coroutines to request the upstream services to or perform other operations like reading files. These tasks are placed into a queue waiting for an idle thread in the pool to execute them. Once a thread complete its task, uh, it is returned into the thread pool and remains idle until it is assigned a new task. Based on the application execution models, uh, here we discuss how our system uh, propagates the trace contest inside the service. For single-threaded applications, uh, we use the unique thread ID for each thread to propagate trace contests. When a request from the downstream is received, the trace contest is stored with the serving thread ID as the key. When sending a request to the upstream service, this contest is then retrieved as the parent, uh, parent contest uh, with the same thread ID. And then the child contest will be generated and injected into the sending request to the upstream service. In a simple multi-threaded application, uh, when a thread forks to uh, create a new thread to request the upstream service, our system monitors the thread creation to capture the parent-child relationships of threads. When the child thread sends a message to the upstream services, our system identifies the parent, uh, parent thread and then uses it to retrieve the parent trace contest and generate the child contest accordingly. In more complex scenario, a multi-threaded application uh, often use uh, thread pools or coroutines to enhance the performance by minimizing the, uh, the overhead of frequently fed uh, creation and destruction. Uh, the figure on the right illustrates how our system propagates the trace contest in a thread pool application. Since multiple uh, tasks can run on the same thread, uh, using the thread ID for uh, trace contest propagation is less effective compared to the task ID. By attaching our uh, eBPF program on the task creation, our system can obtain the parent-child relationship of task. The task scheduling and execution on threads is also monitored to capture the scheduling information. 
or when a thread makes uh, uh, upstream to the upstream service, uh, the system queries the parent context using the warning task ID and the parent task ID, and then generates and ingests the child context into the outgoing message. The table below lists our important eBPF programs, uh, which are used to capture the useful information. And here we shown our hooks on the uh, Golang uh, Net HTTP library as an example. Uh, here is an example to show our uh, the deployment of our system and the performance tests of our system. Uh, we deployed our system to check an end-to-end request in the bulk info application provided by the ISTRO and export our collected trace and spans to the Alibaba Cloud Managed Service for open telemetry to test the performance of our system. The bottom figure shows a trace tree with the span generated by our system for the bulk info application. When serving a user request, the product page service calls the detail and the review service, resulting in five spans. This demonstrates that our system can accurately capture the request causality and generate a span for an end-to-end -end request. Uh, to assess the overhead of our system in tracing uh, requests for the bulk info application, we set up a Kubernetes cluster with five physical machines. The machines runs on a center A-based operating system and have Linux kernel version at 5.10, only 16 GB memory. The workload are generated with 600 concurrent users. The experiments run uh, for three minutes and are repeated three times on the five physical machines. The average result are illustrated in this table. For the service performance, our system increases the request latency by about 0.5% compared to the normal and reduces the QPS of the service by about 0.4%. The additional latency comes from the execution of our customized eBPF programs for intercepting and passing the sending and receiving message in the Linux kernel. Regarding the resource consumption, our system increased the CPU usage by about 4.5% to execute our eBPF program in the kernel, about 2% relative to the normal. Our system also needs about uh, 747 MB additional of the memory to temporarily store part of the message, the generated trace context, and other information. This concludes our solution for implementing an internal eBPF-based distributed tracing system to reduce the instrumentation of open telemetry. Uh, now, Kai will share how to obtain the fine-grained traces. Um, okay, uh, thank you, thank you, Wanqi, uh, for that insightful presentation. Um, building on what we have discussed, uh, we have used eBPF to implement unified request tracing. Um, with this approach, uh, we can observe application performance and uh, the um, request flows through zero instrumentation. And because CBPF's execution efficiency is very close to um, machine code, uh, this method incurs um, minimal additional overhead. However, we still face um, challenges in understanding kernel-level anomalies. 
um, when a service encounters issues and we kind of find bugs in the, um, in the code, uh, it becomes crucial to understand what's happening at the kernel level. Um, maybe I want to know that are there any errors occurring in the kernel and uh, um, which threads are involved and uh, is there a blockage in the network? Okay, well, to uh, address this unknowns, we have explored whether um, we could collect critical kernel functions uh, and include them as spans in our traces. Well, this idea led us to um, three key tasks. And first, we, um, we need to uh, collect te uh, telemetry data about kernel functions and uh, um, after that, we have to um, implement context pro propagation between kernel functions. And then we should um, integrate kernel level and request level uh, telemetry data to, get, uh, to gain further insights for our services. Okay, let's discuss the um, data collection. In kernel space, we need to um, gather runtime data for kernel functions. Um, it's similar to um, data collection in user space. Uh, well, we know that eBPF allows us to uh, attach custom code to kpro and krepro, which will correspond to the um, entry and the exit of kernel function. So as shown in the diagram, we record the um, time step and arguments when entering a kernel function and uh, we record the return value and the um, duration when exceeding. Okay, next we focus on the um, context propagation between kernel functions. Uh, as we all know that there are two basic thread models to consider, that is um, synchronous and asynchronous. For synchronous thread models, there are uh, sequential call and uh, um, nested call patterns. Now let's consider that there is a, there is a thread with a context that has a, has a span named uh, um, parent span. For sequential calls, which means that uh, kernel function two is called after kernel function one. We handle it like this. Um, when the CPU enters um, kernel function one, we create, a, we create a new span called span one based on the current thread's context, and we record it. So at, uh, um, so at this point, uh, the thread's context shows span one instead of, the, um, instead of the parent span. So when the CPU exits kernel function one, span one is removed from the context, and then the context returns to the um, parent span. And the same process applies to uh, kernel function two. Therefore, kernel function one and kernel function two are at the same level in the trace, both under the parent span. Well, in the, trace of, uh, in the case of nested calls, which means kernel function four is called, is called uh, uh, during kernel function three. So when CPU enters kernel function three, we create um, span three based on the current thread context. And then kernel function four is called. It's just unlike uh, sequential calls, the CPU doesn't first return to the uh, parent span. Instead, it executes kernel function four and, uh, and create span four based uh, on span three. Thus, so in the trace, you can see that um, kernel function four is a child of kernel function three. Okay, for asynchronous thread model, uh, as we know that in, in the Linux kernel, there are many kernel threads, and these threads might not belong to um, any application uh, processes. So tracking their interactions is not easy. However, we can use um, the specific features of uh, different Linux subsystems to find solutions. For instance, in the, um, in the network subsystem, 
that KB is a special structure that carries network packets. So we can use SKB to carry context information as well. So when, uh, when the kernel function five processes a packet, we create span five and bind it to the SKB. And when another thread runs uh, kernel, six, uh, kernel function six, it can refer to the SKB and to find uh, uh, that span five is active and uh, we create span six based on span five. So the kernel function six is a subspan of span five in the trace. Well, with kernel level tracing in place, now we need to um, integrate this with uh, request level tracing. Uh, we know that interactions between user space and the kernel space are managed through uh, system calls, and thus we can use um, system calls as a bridge between them. As illustrated in the um, diagram, we first collect data and propagate context across various Linux subsystems, and we will take uh, we will take the um, the network subsystem as an example. Uh, when performing context propagation, uh, we need to update both the span context in SKB and the thread, and we need to um, inject it into the SKB. So when, when, I, um, when a process retrieves kernel data structures through um, syscalls, it first obtains uh, the current span from the thread context. So if available, we use the um, current thread context, and if there is no context there, uh, such as when we're retrieving network streams via um, C3, then we need to um, pass the arguments and extract the context from it. Well, the subsequent proce processing is uh, request tracing as we previously described. Okay, finally, let's look at the result. Compared to um, request tracing, our method allows us to see additional kernel level behavior, which in including network packet processing and uh, um, file operations via system calls. This addresses the um, observability challenges in Kubernetes we mentioned before. Um, application observability and network observability and uh, um, security observability. Well, however, there are some um, limitations due to the um, eBPF constraints. First of all, we rely on some uh, specific BPF helper functions. So we require the runtime kernel version is at least uh, 4.20. And currently, we only support the um, uh, web consortium standard for context propagation, and uh, other standards are not supported yet. And because we need to um, pass network streams in kernel, so we cannot handle encrypted protocols like uh, um, TLS, um, HTTPS, and for uh, streaming protocols such as um, gRPC, uh, each frame is stateful, so it's difficult to parse them in the kernel, uh, so we currently cannot uh, support this either. Well, for future works, we have five goals. And first, we are going to um, support more application-level protocols such as um, MySQL and Kafka. And we plan to um, support network interface tracing for a deeper network insight. And we are going to um, enable profiling tools to um, resolve performance issues. And next, we will integrate this system into um, Alibaba Cloud application monitoring eBPF addition, and uh, we will provide uh, out-of-the-box functionality. 
Uh, and the last, we plan to um, open source our code as soon as possible. Okay, uh, that concludes our presentation for today. Uh, thank you, thank you all for attention, and um, we are happy to take any questions you might have. Oh, yeah, the mic. Uh, you are talking about um, uh, multi-thread and co-routine. So, uh, is your method only works for C++ applications? Uh, actually, uh, it does work with um, Golang as well. Golang. Okay. Yeah, because we uh, implement the um, context propagation between uh, threads, and we in, in Golang uh, in Golang we. Uh, we hook the go routines create and it, and it's uh, um, recycle. So we know the go routines ID with the uh, thread ID, so we can uh, propagate the context. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You, I think you mentioned a co routine instead of go routine. So I think I I misunderstand. You are using uh, the C plus uh, plus application. So. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Is it possible to use this uh, EBPVF uh, based tracing solution with open telemetry? For example, I use open telemetry to uh, tracing the uh, function invocations. So if we can integrate with this uh, uh, EBPVF just. Sorry, I can't get you. <laughs> uh, for example, uh, this uh, EBPF tracing solution, we can only know kernel tracing or network uh, tracing. Yeah. But I have no idea what this tracing comes from. For example, A function invoked to B function. So during this question uh, request, I, if we can inject this EBPF tracing, yeah. Yeah, I can get a more understanding of the tracing, right? Uh, what do you mean? You, you mean that uh, in, in process or inter process to propagate the context? Uh, uh, 或者我用中文, oh, okay, uh, okay. 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 就是因为现在那个EBPF的话,你们这个tracing只是针对kernel的tracing跟network这个,比如这种 我们有做一些尝试，其实比如说在Golang里面，像我们其实每个协程去调度的时候，它会有一个GoID，就是有一个StartGo会放在TLS里面，甚至TLSS里面，我们其实可以通过一些Go的一些UProb的一些方法去
uh, as a new project because Alibaba Cloud has many um, open source projects and we have collaborations with some of them. Uh, so maybe we plan to um, integrate it in, into an existing project such as um, Kuberscope or uh, Alloctail. Yeah. Uh, in your software looks like Grafana Bela. Uh, you can also check this out. Really uh, cool project. It also does uh, eBPF with open telemetry. But uh, uh, thank you. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you.我想问一下就是我对那个 是怎么样就是propagate去哪里的那个data跟那个data就是这是你们很多的metrics啊很多的东西嘛然后你们propagate的时候有没有遇到就是太多data的话呢影响那个performance 都不能再去创建新的BPF 但是这个其实还是需要去有一个更好的一个机制，因为我看其实现在开源上的一些项目也没有考虑过这些问题，他们也都是在就是其实在都在滥用内存了。因为在distribution like tracing 来说的话，通常他们不是把所有的那个那个呃，所有的request都都都存起来，他只是拿可能就是每十个这样子去去去。去去做然后我还有一个问题就是说你们所做的看到你们所所用到的就是怎么样说如果是好像跑跟跑之间的那个communication你们是怎么样处理因为好像你们就是处理到就是就是弄到这个single service或者是同一个process里面，但是如果不同的process，call了以后，你们是怎么样propagate，就是完成它整个的那个用了多少时间呢？还是怎么样做这个tracing的？呃，对，因为这边是就是相当于进程间的一个透传嘛，然后这边